Have you ever wanted to take your music on a journey from dark to light, from minor keys to major keys to give it a brightness? That's what we're going to talk about today during Dr. Doug's Daily Tips for How to Write Great LDS Church Music. To help us, we're going to use primary song, Samuel Tells of the Baby Jesus. Now, this uh, fun primary song, which we sing at Christmas time, starts in the key of C minor, but it ends in the key of E flat major. How do we make that transition? The the verse uh, ends right here, but this whole verse is in the key of C minor. Then when we start the chorus right here, we make a switch to E flat major and we end in E flat major. Well, first, let's discuss why this actually works so well. It's because the keys of C minor and E flat major share a key signature. If you remember the circle of fifths, or if you've never heard of the circle of fifths, just Google it. It'll pull up a whole explanation about what the circle of fifths is. It's how you organize keys and different key areas, all the major keys and all the minor keys. Well, for every major key there is a relative minor key, meaning using the same key signature, you play starting on a different note than the major key, and you get a minor sounding key. Okay, so C minor has three flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, and its relative major or its cousin that uses the same key signature is E flat major. So there are actually several ways to go from dark to light in a key change, from like a a minor key to a major key. This is the easiest way. Maybe not the, it's one of the easiest ways because you could go from C minor to C major in a pretty easy way, but we'll talk about that another day. This one, switching from the relative minor to the relative major, is another quite easy change to make but this hymn, this primary song, does it in a really fun and simple way. Okay, so I'm sure you know the song, but let's let's play it because when we get to the last measure of the verse, something special happens, and it's how the music makes the change. That measure, that one measure, is the portal that takes us from the minor to the major. And then we go into E flat major. But how does how does that work? How does it get there? All right, here's how it works. So we're going along in C minor, and we're using pretty regular chords. The C minor chord there in the first measure, that's the minor one chord. Then we get the minor four chord, back to the minor one chord. Then we get a minor five chord, then the minor one, and then a quickly minor four, and then a regular five that has a seventh on it, five, seven. But the last measure, this A flat chord, that is what we call a major six chord. All right, so in the key of C minor, the sixth scale degree, A flat, and if you build a chord on it, you get A flat, C, E flat, it's a major chord. Well, what's happening is we get to this ending uh, spot here, these last two measures, we get that minor four chord, the F minor, and then a five seven. And the five seven makes us want to go back to C minor. That's what we're expecting. But instead, the composer pulls out the rug. The melody note still goes down to C, but the bass note goes up. That's what we call a deceptive cadence. An authentic cadence is when you end 5-1. But because the 1 chord and the 6 chord share two notes, uh, and in this case they really share one strong note, the C 
That's the really strong one. But E flat is also a shared note between this one chord and the sixth chord in this key. But it's that C that really makes the difference. They both share the C. So you can end on C, but just change the bass note to A flat and go to that minor six, that, that major six chord. It's a deceptive cadence. And then the magic happens. This A flat chord is the four chord in the key of E flat. So the reference point for that chord when we hear it is a f major six in the key of C minor, but it also acts as a four chord in the new key. And if you want to go from four to one, we won't go four, five, one usually, but now we just do it in the key of E flat major. So that moment with A flat, that's the portal moment. This this moment of, ooh, that chord belongs to the key of C minor, but that chord also belongs to the key of E flat major. So instead of resolving this chord in the key of C minor, instead we resolve it in the key of E flat major, and we go from four, because that chord is a four chord in E flat major, to five, seven in the key of E flat major, and then one in the key of E flat major, and we've made it. It's very smooth. Now that's six in C minor, but it's also four in E flat major, and then... So, if you're in a minor key and you want to get to a major key, one excellent way is to go to the relative major key, the key that shares the same key signature, but do it with a deceptive cadence in the minor key, which becomes the four chord in the new major key, and just go ahead and move right into that major key using the chords of that major key, and you've made it. You don't need any other preparation. It's just that one chord which gets redrawn, basically, from the perspective of, oh, this chord is in C minor. But wait, if I look at it this way, this chord is in E flat major also. I'll use it and just continue on in E flat major. It's a great way to modulate from a minor key to its relative major. That is your composer gem for today. If you liked that, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video like this. And if you'd like more free tips and tricks about how to write great LDS church music, please head over to latterdaymuseversity.com where you can get a bunch more. Thanks. We'll see you next time.